Welcome back to the Weekend Warrior Show Recap Podcast. I'm Tyler from the Unemployed Architects. This week I'm going to be talking about my shows. These last few weeks I had a two-nighter over at Kilkenny's in Davenport, Iowa. And then this last weekend I played at Dr. McKay's in Bloomington. So that's mainly what I'm going to be talking about. So the Kilkenny shows, pretty pretty standard ultimately, but... uh, Got there Friday, set everything up, had a good amount of time. Uh, Dave decided to play with us Friday night instead of Saturday night, which was, you know, a nice change of pace. And uh, we got there, and we had, like I said, we had some time, extra time to kind of hang out, which was cool. Got everything up and sounded good. This this was kind of untraditional in the fact that usually the Saturday night shows, I think, are a little bit better. But this case... The Friday night show was, you know, I think quite a bit better. And maybe it was just having Dave or I don't know. But I feel like I played a lot better the Friday and the people were more engaged and maybe a little bit busier. Saturday was fine. It just wasn't my favorite of the two is all. So I wasn't, you know, good or bad really. It was kind of somewhere in the middle. And Saturday I was just like exhausted. I probably didn't get enough sleep at the at the after the friday show i wish i would have slept a little more slept a little later all that stuff i just like couldn't really find my groove but friday night when dave was there we it seemed like a lot lot everybody was very into it very much paying attention and having a good time and that's what you want so i felt good by the end i felt like we did the job well we we got everybody kind of into it and dancing and singing along and it was good, and then Saturday, so Saturday was just a weird day for me. I don't, they supplied a new apartment for us, which was kind of a nice, a pleasant surprise, much bigger, much nicer apartment, and I, I mean, I don't know how long that's going to last. I think that um, as soon as they find somebody to rent that place, they'll probably, you know, rent it out to them, but rent it out to whomever will pay the price. But while it's available, they're letting the band stay there, and it was it was quite a bit nicer. It had two and a half baths and three bedrooms and full kitchen, so I mean it, it was very it was very spacious. It was a lot bigger than our our apartment, like in Bloomington. So it was it was definitely a pleasant surprise to stay there. But I didn't sleep in. We had a new air up mattress, and I couldn't quite get comfortable on it. I don't think. I think that was part of it. I overfilled it. And it was a little bit too firm for me, but uh, and I, like like I said, I just don't know what what the deal was Saturday. I just like could not get up for the show. You know, I took all the caffeine I normally take. I took the Alpha Brain I normally take, and I just like could not get out of my funk before. I did all the stuff I needed to do, but I was like, you know, very lazy about it, and like kind of forced myself to do it, kicking and screaming. Because it was like I didn't want to do anything. But we ended up and we did a little a walkabout uh, around the around Davenport, which isn't something I normally do, especially the day of a show, since I want all my energy kind of reserved for the show. But uh, Lo really wanted to do it, and we ended up and did it kind of later in the day. And it was fun. I, I uh, you know, I, I find myself, especially that day, I found myself like really into just noticing and this was mainly because of Lo you know she's very visual so she notices things she'd point stuff out and since we didn't really have like a lot of stuff we you know we weren't really on a time crunch we had a lot of time to kill kind of you know I I didn't have as much of a list of things going through my head that I needed to do and you know like oh, i need to get that done i need to be here by then and i need to you know take a shower uh, usually that's kind of how my head works i don't really use my eyes as much as i probably should i just kind of i'm in my head all the time so having her kind of point out stuff i should be looking at was was cool and i noticed a lot more stuff and it made me just realize how little i I, fun- I, I my brain just does not work like that i mean hers is like the exact opposite you know she's in that visual space kind of in the moment and i'm like constantly thinking of things that i need to do or get done or oh, i should have done that or it was just it, it was weird to have that so kind of in our faces how different our minds work 
but it was good because I mean it's it's nice. I, I think I just had a re overall realization that I like to have like when we go places and do fun stuff. I like to have like a guide. It makes all the difference, you know, because I don't really know what I should be looking at or where I should go or what I should do. If it's up to me, I end up and just do the the best at the things I'm supposed to do. I don't really search out things very well but having somebody who's been there and done that and knows like i said what to look at i think that makes a, a big difference because when we went out to colorado we'd always have cj one of our buddies out there kind of show us something or take us somewhere or say hey you guys should do this or he's a he's very adventurous he he he's like oh we should do this and we're like okay we'll just follow you <laughs> um and then steve holcomb when him and Emily lived out there. Same thing. We went on a nice hike with those guys, and they they definitely made it much. Like if it was just me and Lo, we wouldn't even have known where to go hike. But having them there, kind of showing us around. And then last year when we went to New Orleans, we had Lo's dad, so he was kind of showing us around all the things that we should be looking at and where we should go and all the you know touristy things that we sh we need to see and maybe some not so touristy things that you know we definitely wouldn't have seeked out so and uh, all those trips were great and i think i just had that re realization when we were walking around davenport so it was cool it was right around where the sun was setting and we were on the mississippi for that and that was nice and uh, it was that, that was probably the high point of Saturday. And then the show was just, I don't know, I, I just felt off my game. And I know that I'll have plenty of shows like that. And it's more just how you get through it. I mean, you can't just quit, you know. You have to really uh, just clench your fist and get through it. And but it is a lot. Like, if I was just playing acoustic, it'd be one thing. But doing the foot drums when I'm not feeling fully energized and then singing and remembering all the words to stuff, I definitely fumbled a fair amount of lyrics, which, I mean, I do that on a regular basis. But it's more about how you recover, I guess. And that's kind of the, the overall thing I'm saying with playing a show when you feel like that. It's like how you recover. You know, you, you, you want to be good even even in those moments that you don't feel your best. And that's a really hard hard thing to get your head around but and it was for me definitely that saturday and then we we got the show over it took me forever to pack up and then we had to you know drive we didn't have to but i, I just really like sleeping in my own bed with possible plus when possible but also you know sleeping on that air up mattress i think hurt my back a little bit and didn't didn't get the best night of sleep and i like to just like get to where we're going to be and just relax you know if i if i have to think about the trip home or like driving in the morning i just like can't completely get comfortable because i have that on my mind whereas if i got home it would be a struggle to get there but once we got there you know and i did the two shows and we made it there we made it back and the weekend's kind of over we have the money it's like i feel like i'm complete kind of or like I can finally let my mind rest a little bit because I accomplished the tasks that need to be accomplished. So, um, so yeah, I always, my vote is always drive home pretty much and I don't drink. So, you know, I don't have to worry about getting pulled over or anything like that, but it was, it was definitely a rough ride home. I mean, it was, we didn't get home till a little after 5 AM and, uh, it was, it was, you know, one of those rides where you have to keep the windows open a little bit and, like, keep it nice and chilly in the car and, you know, stay awake. I, I We actually did pull over and I did take a little nap, like a little 20-minute snooze at, at a rest stop and then, you know, continued the journey. But And then this week came around, and uh, this last week, and we released our single, which, you know, I'd been working on for probably close to a year at this point, which seems ridiculous to say out loud, but I mean, it was probably only four recording sessions, but, you know, to accumulate the funds, about about $300 a session, you know, so to accumulate that amount of money to get the, the song mixed and mastered, well, tracked, mixed and mastered, 
and that that's kind of what how you do it you track everything the first section session you work on mixing and adding anything you need and then the third and fourth sessions are just you know fully mixing and mastering and editing everything so it's nice to be done with it i mean it, it you spend so long on something you, you like like to see it through to being complete and as i was talking about earlier that's just kind of how my head works like i like to get things done i'm a very task complete i'm a task completer i think i i I'm good at getting stuff done. Now, do I do everything the best that could possibly be done? I I think it's pretty safe to say no, but um, I do get it done. I'm good at getting things completed. And this time, I actually got a video done with it, like right when the single was released. So that was good to have that to put out right away. And... Uh, you know, I I always just like to have something to look at while, when people stream it on their phone because I I know that like 90% of people, they're just going to click on the phone and if it doesn't have something to look at, they might last 10 seconds, 15 seconds. It doesn't really give the song a chance to, you know, get their attention and hold, hold them. So I've been trying to release videos and I use the New Orleans footage from when Lo and I went last year so there's lots of little cool clips and stuff not the most amazing video i've ever done or anything but it's just something to look at some interesting things to to, to keep you keep you into it and keep you focused and i released it on youtube i like to release it on youtube first and put it on facebook and promote it a little bit that way and then after a few weeks of that, because I know not everybody's going to click the link, even though it's just like one button. But, uh, you know, I get all the streams I can that way, and we're up to about 300, and it's, I think it was Thursday of last week that I put it out. And, uh, you know, that's not, you know, for like a big artist, that's like nothing. But for us, that's pretty good. 300 in less than a week is pretty good. I feel like the song's a little bit more catchy called the wheel by the way it's on spotify and pandora itunes apple music youtube pretty much anywhere you can stream music it's even on like tiktok and stuff like that but uh yeah so and then next week i'll probably upload it directly to facebook so that way you know all the people that maybe didn't take the time to click the link will you know just hit the sound on button for a second and i'll get some views and streams that way and kind of spread it out and then maybe i'll do like a lyric video just try to really spread out the release because you know once you start post stop posting about it people just will forget about it and you want to have something kind of queued up to also release when that's done so i'm gonna try to and the song i've been working on the most which is um a song called trilogy song and uh, been, i did it on the ipad and sent it to jeff to mix and master is all but complete so i mean it has like two or three little touch-ups mix wise it needs to get done and then that one will be done and it's kind of funny it's like the exact opposite it's like the antithesis of the last song that i released it's over four it's like four and a half minutes this last song was like two and a half minutes this last song the wheel was super happy the trilogy's like very very dark sounding so it'll be cool to release those back to back but uh and then i still have the montag which is what the song i'm working on with jeff um at his place doing like the home recording stuff and that one's all tracked besides some backup vocals it's been taking us a long time to it's been over a year on that one too and that's more just about time and getting people there in the studio but so yeah the goal would be to let this song kind of ride for a month or two the wheel ride for a month or two and then uh release trilogy song right after that and then hopefully by then i would have a new ipad song started and maybe a new one in the studio started and then i'd release montag have videos for all these and just kind of keep them going and i've been doing i've been trying to at least i started i i have a, an acoustic version of one of my older songs called firebound kind of it's all tracked just needs to be mixed and mastered and it's not very there's not a lot of instrumentation so i don't think it will take super long to get done it'll really probably if jeff does it probably take like an afternoon because it's 
super straightforward and that'll be a nice little supplementary thing to release along the way i need to i need to release some more live videos and then of course podcasts and stuff like that but i i don't know it's all just a cluster of madness and i get one tiny thing done every few months that's kind of how it seems to work i have all these like irons in the fire and i just try to try to get things done and like i said i'm good at doing that but my method might not be the greatest and uh i might not be as timely as i would like but you know trying to keep people engaged i feel like is what i need to do like i want people to be excited about our band and what i'm doing and but you know you you don't put anything out for three months people lose interest so that's what i'm going to be trying to do so anyway, this last weekend, I only had one show. Friday, I played at Dr. McKay's with Lowe, and Blair actually showed up. Dave was supposed to come, but uh, after I kind of told him that Blair was going to be there, he seemed less interested just because the stage is so small over there. So um, he didn't tell me till that night that he wasn't going to show up. No, and it doesn't really matter to me too much, but we... We made it, so it would have worked between Blair, me, Lo, and Dave, but so Dave didn't show, and then uh, we had a little bit more room, I guess, which was nice, but a little bit different. Four-hour set over at McKay's, always always a long one, but when we have Blair and me doing covers and originals, it's like so easy to fill that time. What, what I would normally, you know, stru- I, mean, I could probably do five hours if you really twist my arm by myself, but would they be five hours of amazing music? Probably not. So having me do about two hours and Blair do about two hours, or maybe like hour 20, a p- hour 40 a piece, and then Lo kind of does the other 40 minutes or whatever, um, you know, really spreads it out. So we're just doing the best of everybody's stuff and, uh, you know, makes for a fun show for sure. And it, I think Blair kind of was off for the first couple hours, but by the end of that second set, he was starting to feel it a little bit, and that was good. I felt good for most of it. I, a little sloppy start, and I think it was a better, better like performance-wise than we me, Blair and I and Lo have done in, than in a while because he he hasn't played with us very much so always a little worried about that and we didn't really go over a lot of stuff beforehand like we normally do which you know turned out fine but it was overall was a fun show i was glad to have blair there and it was just like a different different vibe different feel and sometimes that's what you need it's a long show but it was fun and we got a lot of compliments a couple one of my students came out and there was a full table that was there like all night singing along and i don't know we've been getting some real good feedback over there and it's like we have played there forever so it just seems as of late we've we must have figured something out with the sound and because it's just been good almost every time we played there which usually was a very hit or miss type thing so yeah that was the shows and then saturday i went down to Olney to see my grandpa uh just hang out there for a little bit which is ended up me being in the car for about seven hours and after the show on friday night i drove to pontiac so my mom wouldn't have to drive in the dark uh the next night so a little little beat and then spent the whole day in the car pretty much hung out with my grandpa for a few hours and headed back and Got back probably around eight or so, but uh, and then I felt I fell asleep pretty early that night. I've just been, you know, you get in these winter months, and it's just like hard to convince myself to do anything for some reason. All the stuff that I would normally like feel good about doing, I just haven't really. So I just have this restless feeling that like I don't want to do anything that I have to do but I don't know what I want to do either. So, like, I don't I don't want to go out of my house most of the time. I want to stay at home, but then I'm like, I have all this energy to put towards something. And whereas normally it'd be like, oh, I'll just play guitar, or like learn a new song, or, you know, one of the things that I, I figure is com- productive to get done when I'm feeling that way, or like a podcast, or... And I just don't have it in me lately for some reason. I'm feeling... A lot of gray it seems like but 
I don't know. And it's like when I release stuff, like release music, in my head I build it up. It's like, oh, this is going to be so awesome that I'm going to feel happy and good. And then I release a song and I, I get about two days of feeling that way. And then it's like back to the grind. You know, it, it never really kind of pans out as much as I want it to. I mean... Who knows, I'm still kind of in the middle of releasing it, and I do think this is a catchier song for us, but I just, I don't know, it's just life, you know? I just, life can be so monotonous sometimes, and I mean, it has a point if you give it a point, but if you feel like the point you've given it isn't like resonate, resonating in you as well, then everything kind of crumbles a little bit like you're I don't know my reasoning for doing stuff has always been music 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 and I I still feel that you know and that's my overall purpose is to make music and put it out and you know nothing may come from it ever but that, that still doesn't really uh, take away from the purpose of like me feeling like I have to put out music and like have to make it and perform and you know it, 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 why I feel like I'm alive pretty much but I just go go through fate and I and I know that it all can't always be awesome like that's just how life is you you have really, really awesome peaks, and you have some pretty low valleys, but a lot of it's like in between, you know, those moments in between, and there's no right or wrong way to do it, and, you know, we're all just kind of figuring it out as we go, and I, I don't know. I feel like this last year was the year that, like, magic died a little bit for me, if, if that's not too somber, uh... I don't know. I, I I used to always just get this feeling around like Christmas time or like different cool things that would happen. And this last year, I just haven't been feeling the same. And I don't know if what what the real cause is. And don't get me wrong, I still have plenty of good good uh, times. Like the the shows and stuff are great. Like during the show, but it's like once the show's over, or once the song is put out, or the video is made. It's like a little bit of emptiness, a little bit of hollowness, and I don't really know what causes it, and uh, I know that pretty much everybody, I think, deals with it to some extent. I don't think that I'm alone in that. I don't know how people that don't create stuff all the time or, like, don't have, like, I know there's a lot of people that just kind of go to their job and come home and kind of repeat, and that's just their life, you know? It, go to the bar on the weekend or you know they have a family and they're, they're that's their purpose but I know that a lot of people still feel this kind of monotony and restlessness and uh, I don't I don't, just don't know what the cure is really I mean and there probably just isn't you probably just feel that way and then you don't feel that way sometimes but uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now I just, uh, I don't know. It's just how, how, how it is. That's how it is currently for me. I don't know if other people feel that way or if I'm just a crazy person. I know I'm a little bit of a crazy person. I don't uh, necessarily think the same as the mass is maybe. But I don't really know. But, uh hoping to figure something out on that front soon. It's just like I don't have a lot of real tangible things to look forward to, I guess. Maybe maybe that's why I should have kids or something because, you know, you look forward to stuff for the kids and you kind of see it through their eyes and that's exciting. And I don't know if that's, if that's the thing that I'm feeling. I know that around this age is where a lot of people do start to have families and whatnot, and I don't have that really. I just have the, you know, the, the current family. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But all I can do is just kind of keep pushing forward, keep 
showing up at work, keep, you know, and hope to hope to get to that next spot of happiness. But I just feel like I haven't had it in a while, that, that spot. You know, I get glimpses of it. I get glimpses in a show or I get glimpses when I, like, ah, oh, I finally completed, like, a single and I can release it and put it out. But it's nothing sustains for very long. Like, I just... And it seems to just be getting shorter and shorter the older I get. But time moves pa faster too, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. Maybe because, you know, as you get older, your point of reference gets wider and wider. So, you know, when you're young and it's a year, it's like, you know, if you're eight, that's an eighth of your life is a year. When you're 30, that's one thirtieth of your life. So your point of reference gets bigger and bigger. So it makes time seem like it moves faster and faster. So maybe that's just what it is. Like the time time is moving more quickly because I'm older or my, my reference of time is moving more quickly. And so those times of happiness go quicker as well. I don't know. Anyway, all stuff I'm trying to figure out, working on. Don't, don't really know the answer to, but who knows? I, I always, in my head, I'm like, oh, if I was successful or, oh, if I didn't have to work my day job, I, I would be so happy. But then, you know, you talk, you, you hear really successful people talk, and that's always what they say is, like, they they work really hard, and they, they think that there's some, like, gold pot at the end of the rainbow, but really there's just life and what it is. I mean, your problems don't go away they just change and you're still you're still stuck with kind of a some sort of void that is hard to be filled and uh anyway so i'm just trying to kind of get through kind of one of the low points i think and hopefully you know when you're at the low points you only have stuff to look forward to i guess uh because it can only go up but Anyway, so next week I am at Clark Bar in Champaign, and that's what I'll be talking about. Only one show. Didn't get a show booked for Valentine's Day, but I was kind of, you know, I didn't push to book that date really very much because it'll be nice to have it off and go out and try to do something fun with Lo and probably go to dinner and a movie on a Friday night, which happens rarely, so... That'll be kind of what I'm talking about next week. So uh, if you took the time to listen, as always, I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.